Hi, I'm Curran, and today I'm going to introduce Node.js. This is their website. It says it's a JavaScript runtime built on Chrome's V8 JavaScript engine. So first of all, I'm running Chrome right now. And if you go over here into the developer tools, you'll notice that there's a console. And this is a JavaScript console. You can run JavaScript code here, like var x equals 5, you know, console.log, hello world. So this is our Hello World JavaScript program. And this is actually running in V8. So if you, if you Google V8, you see it's, it's, it's the JavaScript engine inside of Chrome. And it's from the Chromium project. It's open source. And what this is is a runtime environment for JavaScript. That means it can parse JavaScript code and run it. And so you know, usually JavaScript is run inside of a browser. But what Node.js is, is it's this V8 JavaScript engine embedded inside of an operating system level process. So you can write command line tools and web servers using this. So if you open up a, a console, and I have Node already installed, if I run the command Node, this is you know pretty much the same thing as this console here in the web browser but it's inside of an operating system level process instead. It's not inside of the web browser anymore. And so because it's in a process, you can do things like access the file system and open up network connections. And so we, we can type JavaScript in here, var x equals 5, you know, just like in the browser console, console.log hello world, and it will print out hello world. And to exit out of this terminal, it's called the REPL, read, eval, print, loop. This is another name for, for a console where you can type commands. So to exit out of this REPL, you hit um, control C. So let's say you want to write a script. So I'm going to make a temporary directory here. So there's no files here, so I'm going to create a file called um, main.js. And in this text file, if we write some JavaScript and save it, we can run it using Node as a program. So let's type the same thing, console.log hello world, and save it. So we can see there's main.js there. And the contents of main.js is console.log hello world. So then we can run this with the command node main.js, and it runs, and it outputs hello world, and then it exits. So that's our first node.js program. So, so far, you know, it's straightforward running JavaScript inside of a, of a process. But let's do something that node can do and the browser cannot, like uh, read a file. You know, in a web browser, you can't read a file. It's, a, it's in a sandboxed environment. It's in a secure environment. So you can't access the file system at all. But with Node, you can. So let's just Google, you know, Node read a file. So let's see, how do I read a file in Node.js? Here's a nice example of how you can read a file. So first of all, we're going to use this require command. So as an aside, you know, leading up to actually reading a file, I want to explain about the, the module system of Node.js. So here we're just printing out hello world, but let's say we, we want to encapsulate some functionality here into a module. For example, a greeter function. Let's call it greet. A function that takes as input somebody's name and returns hello, whoever that person is. You know, hello plus name. And so then we could use it by saying greet the world. So if we write this file and then run it with the node main.js command, this is, how, this is one way you can run commands from within Vim. And it's really easy to write the file and just run the command. So it prints out hello world, sort of as we expected. But let's say we wanted to define greet in a separate file. So we can open up a separate file called greet.js. And we can move that function over into that file. And then all we need to do to make it into a node module or a common JS module 
is to say module dot exports equals greet and now you can you can say module to exports equals anything it could be an object it could be a function but this is the public facing API of the module it's the thing that the module exposes to other programs that require it and so when we write this file we can we can make this function greet available into our code uh, of the main program like this var greet equals require greet and if you just put it like this greet it will look for the module in npm which is the package manager so to say that we just want it to be the local file it has to be dot slash you know dot is the current directory dot dot slash means the file is in the current directory so we write all the all the files and then run the program again again it says hello world so this is sort of how the module system works in Node.js and so just to clarify because we're using greet in a bunch of places you know this this is a local variable and we could call it anything and this require call gives us that exports object from the module but we could name it anything here if we wanted to and it would still work this could um, go on and on you know you can require a module that requires yet another module and that's how you can scale complexity of the code so node has a bunch of built-in modules like tons and tons of built-in modules like one of them is the child process API where you can fork uh, sub processes you know you can f you can make ch a child process which is something that you can do with like bash scripts or C but you can do it with node also and there's there's also an HTTP module for setting up an HTTP server and then there's also the file system modules and so let's try out this file system module to load a file one of nodes built-in modules is called the FS and we can just require it like that and usually the local variable is named the same thing as the package and so once we've required the FS module we can read a file like this fs.read file the name of the file let's say we have a text file called test.txt and we can put some random text in there and it's called test.txt so we can read in test txt and the second argument here is the encoding which is almost always UTF-8 and then here's where we get into this notion of a callback function for most of these built-in modules there's a variant called uh, sync which is synchronous and this will read the file and while it's reading the file it will block execution so the rest of the script won't run until after the file is read in var text equals the return value from read file sync which should be the stuff that's inside the text file and then we can log it out to the console just to see that it read that it got read in so it looks like it worked it read the file and it printed out the contents but this is sort of against the node way because node is designed to be non-blocking and so this I mean you can use the synchronous version of of anything knowing that it will block execution but you shouldn't do this in like a server for example because that means that let's say if somebody's requesting a file and the file takes like a second to read in that means during that second nobody else could read anything you know nobody else could do anything because JavaScript is single threaded and so to get around this uh, blocking IO issue that plagues a lot of other languages and requires multi-threading to get around that node has this whole philosophy of being non-blocking and using these callback functions all the time and so with the read file API uh, the asynchronous version the non-blocking asynchronous version takes a callback function and you pass in a function as the third argument and this function will be called when that file is loaded and ready to go but it won't block execution so that means multiple files could be read at the same time 
even though JavaScript is single-threaded. And so let's go back to this example. So you'll notice that the arguments to the callback, the first one is this error object, and the second one is the data that got read in from the file. And this is a convention that you'll see all across Node.js. It's called error first callbacks. And this is sort of a fundamental thing with Node.js. You see it in all the different modules that you'll be using for asynchronous code. And so it's a way of dealing with asynchronous code that just relies on JavaScript patterns, you know, just a function. And there's all this talk of using promises, uh, which is sort of the new way of dealing with asynchronous code and generators with ES6, but this is very established in Node.js and it's pretty simple. The, the way it works is, in order to handle errors with asynchronous code, you need to do that somehow, right? And so there's this convention that the first argument is an error ar object. And then the second, third, fourth arguments are whatever the asynchronous function is giving to you. So in this case, just the data that comes back from the text file. So I'll call it text because that's what we were calling it before. And it no longer really returns anything useful. You know, it, it, the text from the file doesn't get returned from the function, it gets passed into the callback. And so now we can put this console.log text inside the callback. And let's see if this works. Great, this works. So this is really how you can read a file with Node.js. Similarly, you can write a file. So when you want to write a file, it's very similar to reading a file. The first argument is the name of the file. The second argument is the text that you want to write into the file. And the third argument is an error first callback that just has an error. And so if the error is defined, that means that there was an error. But if the error object is null, that means that everything was fine. And so let's just test this out. You know, let's write a file. Test write.txt and then hello world. And so when we run this, it should write hello world into that text file called testwrite.txt. So it said it wrote the file. And let's open up that file and see if it actually wrote it. OK, there it is. It says hello world. So this is how you can read and write files with Node.js. And another really cool thing you can do with Node.js is create web servers. And this is really where Node.js has taken off. So let's see a basic, basic example of how to create an HTTP server with Node.js. So if you just do a Google search for this, there's tons and tons of example code. And this is sort of the, the lowest level of creating a web server with Node. It's using Node's built-in HTTP module. And so this is sort of how it works. Let's, let's give it a try. So let's start from scratch here and say var HTTP equals require HTTP. And by the way, HTTP stands for Hypertext Transfer Protocol. And this is where, you know, the term URL comes from. This is really the foundation of, of the World Wide Web. So it's a protocol for basically transferring text from servers to the to a web browser. Yeah, and so when you load a web page, the web browser is actually making an HTTP GET request. And usually when you submit a form with some of your some data, that's an HTTP POST request. And there's all kinds of other HTTP, HTTP methods, but GET and POST are the most common. So once we've required this HTTP module, we can use it to construct an HTTP server that will listen for HTTP requests like GET and PUT. The syntax is like this. You make a server, var server equals HTTP dot create server.
and this takes as input a function that will handle all the various requests that come into it. And the signature of this function should be request and response. The request object is information about the request that came in. And then the response is, you know, what are you giving back? And there's a whole big API around this uh, request and response objects. But the simplest thing is just to call end, response.end. And when you call response.end, you can pass it some text that says, you know, it could be anything. Let's say hello world. And then once we've constructed a server, we need to start it up by calling a specific function called listen. So when you call server.listen, you have to give it a port. And usually port 80 is where HTTP requests go. Uh, but you need to have you know, super user privileges to use port 80. So I think one of the most common ports that I've seen for you know, development is uh, 3000. And then the second argument here is a function that gets called once the server has started up. So we can just print out some text that says, you know, the server is listening at HTTP colon slash slash localhost colon 3000. So localhost is a special uh, keyword that says this, it means this computer. You know, it means go to the server that's running at this computer. And then colon 3000 means, you know, use port 3000 for the request. So let's run this and see what happens. So notice that the program didn't exit. The program is still running right now. The, the program is you know, blocking our console and it's running. And so let's go to this in the web browser in Chrome. Just paste that in. And it says, hello world. It worked. So when we hit enter here, it makes an HTTP GET request. And then the server you know, gives back, hello world as the response. But notice how it's uh, in, the, in this like block text. We didn't tell the browser that this should be interpreted as HTML. It's called a MIME type. And so sort of the next logical step here is to specify the content type. And this gets into the HTTP protocol. So let's just do a slight modification that says response.writeHead. That means write the HTTP header. And the, the content type will be text slash uh, HTML. Yeah, so this is a, a, what's called a MIME type. It's the media type. So when you send back something over HTTP, the MIME type tells the browser or whatever is going to handle the response what type of content this is. And so for HTML pages, content type should be text slash HTML. And by the way, in the node world, people usually use single quotes instead of double quotes. And you know, I kind of prefer double quotes, but let's just make this the node way, you know, and replace all the double quotes, double quotes with single quotes. So now this is a proper Node.js program that's, that follows the conventions of the Node community. So now if we run this, and then we access localhost colon 3000, you'll see that it's, it looks like this. It's, uh, it's interpreting the result as an HTML document. So we could write HTML actually in this response, put this in an h1 tag, which means heading one means it's big. It's going to be big text. So if we run it, and then load the page again, we say, whoa, it's a big text, h1. So now that we know how to make a basic HTTP server that renders some HTML text, and we know how to write code that reads a file, let's combine these together to make a web server that reads and serves an HTML file. So let's again require the FS module, because we're going to need that to read the file. And then in this function that handles the requests in the server, we can read a file called index.html, which is a convention for you know, the main 
the main HTML file. So inside of here, we can say fs.read file. Index.html is the name of the file. The encoding is UTF-8. And by the way, uh, UTF-8 is a way of encoding text files on disk. So it's a standard for encoding text as zeros and ones. You know, it's a binary format for text. So we need this to tell Node how to interpret the bytes in the file. You know, it says read, it pretty much means read this file as character data, treat it as a text file. And then the error first callback that will handle the file. And then once we have the text, we can pass that into response.end. So let's make the index.html file. I like to refer to JSBin for a nice simple starting point for an HTML page. So now this will be a complete HTML document. And in the body, we can say h1 hello world, like that. So we can paste this into index.html and save all the files and run the server. And let's see if it works. So back to localhost colon 3000. Boom. It works. And if we go back and uh, change this file, you know, we get the changes from the file. So just to prove the point that, you know, it's, it's a web server serving HTML and you can put arbitrarily complex stuff inside of the HTML document. We can copy some code from this example that uses D3JS to make this crazy graphic and we can paste it into here. So we can save that HTML file and then run the server and we can see that it gives us this crazy graphic. So far we've just used built-in modules and we've made one module ourselves. but the real power of Node.js, and this is the thing that makes Node.js a galaxy of software and not just a single project, is this thing called NPM, which is the Node Package Manager. And NPM is, it's a company, well NPM is a service and it's also a company. Uh, but they're providing a great service to this open source community by providing a package manager. So you can search for packages like, there's this great package called async, which helps you deal with uh, more complicated control flow with asynchronous functions. So let's say you wanted to read two or three files and then do something after those files were loaded. You could use async.js to, to do that. And NPM packages are typically actually repositories on GitHub. They're usually open source repositories on GitHub. And so, so you can use, you know, the number of stars to evaluate like, oh, is this a reliable module? Could I, should I adopt this or not? So async is like one of the most popular things in the Node ecosystem. And another one of the most popular packages in NPM is called Express. Express is a more fully fledged uh, web server framework. And you can very easily construct complicated web applications. And this is built on top of the HTTP module. To install a package from NPM, you can run this command NPM install, and then the name of the module. So let's say express. So when you run this, it will go to the NPM server and it will figure out what's the latest version of Express and it will download it and it will put it into a directory called node underscore modules. It's a good idea to have what's called a package.json file. This file is for use with NPM and it tells NPM which modules your project depends on. And so to create this package.json file, you can run npm init, and it asks you a bunch of questions like, what's the name of the project? What's the version? And put a description. What's the entry point, test command, 
get repository. So you can leave all this stuff empty, or you could put stuff. You should put stuff there it's, if it's a proper, you know, open source project or something. So I'm just accepting the de defaults, and this is what it gives you. And then once you have this file in place, you can run npm install dash dash save, and the dash dash save will put this module as a dependency of your project inside the package.json file. And you could also use dash s, which is sort of a shorthand. So let's install express. And so see, now we have this node underscore modules directory, and that's where the actual module gets stored. And if you see what's there, there's a bunch of stuff. Express is there, but there's also all these other packages that Express depends on indirectly or directly. So these are the dependencies of Express. So when you install Express, you're actually installing all these other modules. And if we take a look at the contents of package.json, you know, now Express is there as a dependency. And this is the version using uh, semver, semantic versioning numbers. But anyway, once we have Express installed, we can require it like this, var express equals require express. So now we have express the express module available in our code, and we can follow this simple uh, example. Well, that's all for today. I think I'll cover more on express later. Hope you enjoyed this. Take care.